Hey Thunder fans, welcome to Off the Tracks. It's our first ever episode here as we'll preview and get to know some of the Thunder fans as we get set for our next matchup coming tomorrow night here at the U.S. Cellular Coliseum when the Thunder take on the Green Bay Gamblers. And our Fright Night, don't forget, kids 12 and under, get in free into that game. So come on out and get some trick-or-treating in. Wear those costumes. Uh, if you get if you wear those costumes, you can get into free for that game. Uh, so tonight we'll preview a little bit into that game with our head coach, Dennis Williams, in just a couple minutes. And then we'll get to know a couple of the Thunder Thunder players, assistant captain Vince Pedri and Jake Slaker. As for right now, let's get started here with head coach Dennis Williams, who joins the table here now. Thanks for uh, taking the time here, Dennis, to yeah. come talk with the fans here. And it's uh, as we we're kind of starting to get into the season now. We're ten, we're just under ten games mm -hmm. in, and the team's kind of starting to take shape and starting to to see where exactly places people are going to lie in. Uh, in this team and and where it's going to fit into the entire USHL. I know it wasn't the best of weekends, but overall, I, I mean, what's the assessment been for the first uh, nine games or so in this season? Well, I definitely, uh, I would say, you know, the work ethics there right now. Uh, kind of been a little bit of a roller coaster. We started off well, and then um, we kind of, I think, tailored off to playing our own game a lot. And you can ask the guys there that you're talking to. We had a lot of talks as a group of, you know, what, what is it we want to be as a team? How, how we want to play? What do we want to be known for? It, you know, the uh, the way we want to play as a coaching staff is uh, holding these guys with a high standard of, of hockey and, and making sure we're executing all the plays at a um, high uh, percentage, you know, and, and playing the game right. And you, you, you saw throughout the uh, past weekend that parts of our game collapsed there and, and our, our discipline was poor, our uh, penalty kill. But the good thing is that's a long time ago and, you know, tomorrow's a new day and a uh, new challenge and new opponent. And, you know, that's what we've um, the last few days just been focused on. We, we learned a little bit on Monday about our mistakes, but, you know, from Monday on, we've kind of moved forward and, you know, we're working a lot on our neutral zone and spent some time yesterday with just the power play groups and, um, you know, trying to build up their confidence. And now it's just kind of putting that to the back, a, a, a nice long week of practice and you get to put it all to the back of the mind and kind of, you hold on to it a little bit, but now it's the focus on Green Bay for this weekend and moving forward with this team because there's still a lot of hockey to be played here in this season. Well, there's plenty of hockey. <laughs> you know, we, uh, uh, you know, the the thing we have right now is, you know, we're, we're probably right where we where we deserve to be. You know, we're a 500 hockey team. That's how we've played. Um, you know, we've we've had some uh, some great games and some games that we've been able to you now identify in areas of improvement. And as a new coaching staff with myself and Hoodie and Julesy and and um, you know it's funny because I you got a guy like Vince here today. Uh, I asked him a lot of questions. He's been in the league um, you know, longer than I have, and guys like Galtzy and then any of the veterans. You know how things work a little bit because we as coaches have to continue to learn, and and uh, we rely on these guys to give us a lot of feedback as well. And but it's uh, it, what I've been able to figure out is it's a very good hockey league. Yeah. <laughs> and I know every time people always talk to us about oh you know. Um, you have another big challenge, you know, it's going to be the same thing every weekend and, and you find out quickly if you take a shift off or if you uh, uh, don't uh, execute a, uh, a system well or one guy's out of whack that it's a quickly one nothing hockey game and you can fall behind and maybe never catch them. So um, for our, our, our young group, I, I think we're learning where you know, we've kind of faltered, I thought, in the direction we wanted to be heading and, and it's not so much the wins and losses we evaluate, it's, it's, it's how we play the game, you know, and as we say to the guys, we're going to lose a lot of hockey games where we execute well, but let's not make it easy either, you know, on teams. Mm -hmm. let's, let's make sure we, we, we play our game. And if they're going to win, they got to give their very best. Let's, let's limit our turnovers in the neutral zone. Let's limit them in our zone. And, you know, if they want to score goals, let's make sure they're coming 200 feet with five guys in the picture all the way back. So now you made the jump this season, kind of stepping away from the hockey side, side of it from this season, but you made the jump from the North American league. And it was kind of the, the same thing. Amarillo had, had a, when you started up in that program, it was a very early program. Just kind of talk about the parallels between starting in the American North American League to then coming into the USHL and starting here. There's obviously a lot of uh, similarities, mm -hmm. and, and uh, there's also some drastic differences. And um, you know, it, it's fun putting it together. You know, because you get to stamp it. You know, you get to put your mark on the program and, and design it the way you want uh, the way you want your uh, program to be poor portrayed you know so uh we do a lot of uh, we do a lot of talking with our guys you know i'm 
I'm, I'm big on the lines of communication and, and uh, some guys probably still feel a little timid maybe to come in and talk, but if you were to ask, uh, you know, quite a few of them and, you know, we're, we're here to make them better. We, you know, we want to move them on. And that was the same thing when we started in Amarillo was, um, you know, the guys know we have a sentence of uh, accountability and high standards, but, you know, we also know when to have fun with them and, and joke with them. And, and uh, you know, so I think that's kind of, you know, what you see a lot here, but you know, the, the biggest difference is the skill level, mm -hmm. like the, the talent, um, you know, you're dealing, um, you know, not so much down, down, you know, in the North American league in Amarillo, what, what great kids we had there. A um, little bit different, I, I, like I said, in terms of uh, their expectations, skill level. They come to work every day. They're they're kind of, uh, uh, you know, they don't take it for granted type mentality. Sometimes here we deal with um, players coming out of different leagues that are, are very good, and you have to massage and, and deal with how you uh, you deal with players and to get them to buy in and get on the same page. But you no, know, it's it's been really fun. You know, I I can tell you it's. It's been a stressful 10, 10 games already, you know, and, and I, I joke about a lot of times the pressures we put on ourselves are, are magnified more than what we get, you know, from our president or anybody out there. You know, we, we want to win hockey games just as much as anyone, and we want to give a great product to our fans. And I know the players want to um, give a great product out there. So it's uh, it, it, it has been a, a fun but challenging process. And, you know, I wouldn't want it uh, any other way, you know, if, taking over another program, you know, with, with other guys, uh, players there and everything, you know, you, you might've had earlier, say success right off the hop. And I think we've had a successful year so far. I think I've seen players get a lot better. I've seen our team gel together great as a group and you know, we face some adversity and we haven't cracked and you know, we're going to keep going. So you've seen also the other side of the coin too, because there's all, all these guys, this is, we've mentioned it before. This is a demel developmental program. You want guys to make that jump to the NCAA Division One colleges. So you've seen the North American League, and even before that, you were with Division One colleges. You know, working there to just to see the the start, the middle, and now the the end goal too with uh, the Division One products. Does it help kind of show the guys? All right, I I know the map to get you guys to these places and, and kind of help you get to those goals. Well, you know, you you, tr you try to lead them. You know? <laughs> Whether they listen to you sometimes or not, that's a different story. But I always tell the guys, we're, we're not here for them to fail. We're here to make them successful. Sometimes they may think that we're picking on them or hard on them, right? But it's it's we don't want any player to to not succeed. We want every one of our guys to play college hockey. And more importantly, we want every guy to play pro. You know, so I think um, you know if you look at you know the way. And, and when you're dealing with, with this age group, sometimes they look at it first time away from home, maybe first time uh, away from their girlfriend, mom and dad are on them. You know, you just don't know what's going on in their personal life. And then all of a sudden, maybe hockey, they're, they're healthy scratch. So everything kind of just piles up. So as we say to our guys today, you know, even on, on systems, like you got to communicate. If you don't talk to us, we, we, we don't know. And uh, uh, no different than systems. If, if, if you have a question about a system, ask us mm -hmm. otherwise we think you know it you know and and uh no different than if there's stuff going on in, in um, their personal lives that need to get off their chest but it's you know we're here like i said to to see these young men succeed you know in a, in a great year we could you want to lose 23 guys every year mm -hmm. you know we, we said the same thing uh we were fortunate enough in Amarillo every year to lose 16 18 guys a year and that's that's junior hockey you mm -hmm. know and and you know some coaches are all about trying to have them say back another year for their own personal success. Hey, this is a developmental league. And when a college says that a guy's ready to play, then they're ready to play. That's no longer my say. That's mm -hmm. that's up to the guys making the big bucks at the next level, <laughs> you know? So our job is to get them prepared as quickly as possible so that they can move on and pursue their dreams of being a Division One college hockey player. So then the other thing that, that some people don't even think about too is it's, it's tough for a guy to move away from home and, and be away mm -hmm. from his family, like you mentioned just to be able to work with the billet families and kind of try and, and, and create a, an environment here in Bloomington. Now starting that up from scratch to that, that's also a challenge as you start a first year program. How's that been going forward? I know Harry's been, been the guy who's really been uh, taking that as well as Donna in the front office with our, with our program. Yeah. Well, Donna has done a fantastic job. She's a brilliant coordinator mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, finding, finding all these homes, especially at the beginning when we had, mm -hmm. um, our main camp in here, our training camp, I guess, sorry. And that's, it's difficult when you're trying to sell something like that, where people don't know what exactly uh, billeting or, or housing a player really means or what it entails. But, um, and again, good questions to ask, you know, you got a guy like uh, Jake Slaker here, yep. um, you know, and, and Vince who's, who's lived in a few homes, right. And, and it, how important it is uh, to a player's uh, 
um, uh, hockey career of getting a good family, one that takes care of them, one that gives them a good good home, good bed, uh, good food. You know, um, you know they're, they're not there to baby them, you know, because it's a part of a learning process for them too. So when they get to college, but um, it, it would be difficult. I've never moved away from home. I got to play junior in my hometown, and um, my my first time was college, and it was hard for me as a as a true freshman to go in and and finally be, you know, where, where, where's mom and dad? You know, I I just failed the test. I I'm not playing. Like you know, you want to go back to your comfort blanket, you know, kind of. And, and a lot of times, everyone's comfort blanket is back to mom and dad or family, right? And and I learned it the hard way because I wish I would have went away in junior <laughs> hockey, so I learned a little bit more about it. But you know, these guys are they're going to be bigger and stronger and 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 mentally stronger for moving away from home. And and um, you know, when they do make that jump to college, it's transitions be that much easier we're talking here with head coach dennis williams here on off the tracks first episode ever here with the bloomington thunder feel free to tweet at us at bloomington thunder uh on twitter and and give us any uh, questions that you might have at home and dennis you know not to put you on the spot with the guys in the room but these two guys that we have uh, that we're going to talk to in a little bit jake slaker and vince pedry just kind of touch on on each of them and, and what they've kind of brought to the program and um, I, two kind of different spectrum guys, one defenseman, one forward, one veteran, one, uh, one rookie here in the USHL, just kind of touch on where, what they've done for this program already, uh, through 10 games or nine games. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we can start with, uh, Slakes there, you know, he's, um, he, you know, what he, what he's done since he's been here, I, I didn't really know him uh, a whole lot. And you, know, you can probably attest to that. And when you talk to him, I didn't really talk to him a lot. We traded for him, uh, mm -hmm. prior to the season and, you know, he came to camp and and uh, he just kept growing on me, you know, and, and when I'm sitting there with, with Hoodie, we're watching and, you know, there's certain players we like, you know, and the way they play and, and obviously that's how we try to assemble a hockey team. And um, as each game went by and, and at the camp, you know, there he was, he was right, right in the mix, working hard, competing hard, battling hard, comes back here to our uh, training camp, just gets better and better. And, um, you know, he he's a great example of, of a player that, just won't take no for an answer, you know, like he's, he's going to be here. You know, he's not, he's not going to settle for, you know, not being in the lineup. He's not going to settle for not being impact player in the lineup. And, you know, his hard work is, is I think paying off and, and is, and the idea that, you know, we got him actually this weekend on the power play, um, you know, working down low there with a the group and, and it has nothing to do with um, any more than, than him buying into what we're selling and him working hard and, you know, so he's he's done a great job for us there. And obviously, Vince is um, uh, someone we lean on quite a bit. I talked to Vince on a lot of occasions, just one on one, and can get you know the pulse on the team and, and players. And uh, you know he's he's a big part of it. He's he's won a championship in this league. He knows what it takes. Um, we we lead on him for that manner, and to, as well as keeping the DN check back there. You know, and and uh, uh, he's been absolutely fantastic. And and. Uh, you know, he's from the get go. He's he's been working hard. He's he's getting a lot of opportunity. Obviously, plays a lot of minutes for us. And uh, but he'll tell you just like the rest of them, he's gonna be held accountable too. You know, and uh, he's gonna keep uh, performing and executing and being a leader both on and off the ice. And um, that's one of the uh, the tough parts I think about being a captain here is that um, you know I think when, when, again when I talked with Vince and and, and uh, Manny Mendelson and and uh, uh, Jenks. It wasn't just given to him, you know, it was, hey, here's what it's going to take. Here's what the expectations are. Can you handle it? If you can't, there's no harm, no foul. Just don't take it, you know, um, but it's not going to be easy. There's going to be uh, tough times and, and those obviously high times with it, but you just say even keel and, and uh, he's done that, you know, and uh, uh, he wears his uh, heart in his sleeve and, you know, we're going to continue to uh, follow his lead. So the other thing uh, about starting this program is you got to move away from your home in Amarillo and come up to Bloomington and yeah. your family making the adjustment too. And how, how's it been for you kind of acclimating yourself with the Bloomington area and, and just bringing the family here uh, to Bloomington normal? Well, we obviously, we, we, we love it up here. You know, we loved it in Amarillo. I, I have a great wife, you know, and, and uh, Holly and, and our girls are at an age where her five-year-old was, she misses Amarillo right now with friends and that our two-year-old, she, you know, as long as there's ice cream up here, you know, <laughs> she, she's good to go. But, um, we're, uh, we're, we're very lucky, you know, and I'm, I'm very lucky because um, we, you know, again, having a, a wife like Holly that can pick up and move with her job and, and is excited to um, allow me to pursue 
my coaching career and you know it's not easy being a coach's wife it's probably the worst out there uh, because we're we're kind of uh you know we, we just don't get to turn off our our office phone at five o'clock you know like i turn it off when my eyes go to bed at night and it, i'm on my phone when i get up in the morning first thing i do is i grab my phone i check my emails you know so mm -hmm. um you know that's that's how that kind of works right but um we, we do miss uh amarillo's obviously a lot of differences we're from more of this area right and mm -hmm. and uh but we we'll definitely have to uh uh do thank a lot of our neighbors like it's everyone's been great you know we move right in the neighborhood and uh, kids all get along and people have been real friendly up here and uh, you know it's just a matter of time we get to meet more people you know but we do miss it down there the panhandle something different we've never <laughs> been there we're good friends with a lot of people still down there I talk to them all the time yeah. um, you know they're the first ones to call after wins and the first mm -hmm. ones to call to give you words of encouragement <laughs> too when you don't win so yeah. it's it's nice to have you know our family up here but also our second family down in Amarillo Texas heard you've great things from from not only Amarillo but just anywhere in Texas my family's from there I have a couple family members down in Dallas but uh, I've never been and I can't really attest to just the weather climate to change it's going to be a little different once we start getting yeah. snow on the ground here my daughter this morning it's freezing <laughs> outside <laughs> already you know and uh uh, but we get cold weather there, but just not a lot of snow, right. you know, maybe for a day and then it melts, right? And everyone stays in for 24 hours. But it seemed like every time we got snow last year, we never saw it once. Uh, we were on the road. Mm -hmm. Like we are in Corpus Christi, so I'd send a picture on, on right. the ocean <laughs> back to my wife and she's got three feet of snow. Uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, it is definitely, it's, uh, and it, you know, what's really nice about the whole thing is, is having the same ownership group, mm -hmm. you know, the transition. Uh, I couldn't be more thankful and, and fortunate to work, you know, under uh, Gary Jellin and Mr. Yule, you know, like, um, you know, they give us all the, the tools to be, um, to be successful, the support, and then to be able to make this transition from the North American League to the USHL, working under um, them, it's just, it's, it's been a great experience. We're finishing up here with head coach Dennis Williams on Off the Tracks, the first episode here for the Bloomington Thunder, and coach just kind of getting back to the hockey side. We get Green yeah. Bay here coming up tomorrow night on Halloween and Green Bay a team that you know the, the team was able to win six to two last time Green Bay came to town but it's been three weeks since then they're a new team mm -hmm. what's kind of the expectation here trying to get the ball rolling again here with the, the program we just got to keep it simple you know we got to get back to the roots of the game we got to get back to worrying about us and executing how we want to play and making teams hopefully you know what you want to do is you want to make teams try to adapt to how we're playing, you know, and um, there's going to be times where we're going to have to change our systems. But for right now, I, I think if we have a game plan in mind that we truly think will give us a chance to win the game, you know, it's a matter of our guys um, going out, uh, competing hard and executing it. And if we do that, you know, we're, we are we get a good chance to, to uh, win ourselves hockey. All right, that's head coach Dennis Williams. We're going to take a quick timeout, but when we come back, don't go anywhere. We got Vince Pedrie and Jake Slaker coming up right after this on the Bloomington Thunders off the track season premiere here on BloomingtonThunder.tv. Where are you going, Brian? At Accelerated Rehabilitation Centers, our patient's first philosophy is no empty promise. A dedicated team of physical and occupational therapists, we're here whenever you need us. With over 170 locations, we offer morning and evening appointments. Just call 877-97-REHAB. 
That's 877-977-3422. Or visit acceleratedrehab.com. Accelerated Rehabilitation Centers, putting patients first. The Pit at Four Seasons Health Club is bringing you the number one sports performance training program in America. Men's Health Thrive, created by world-renowned strength coach Mike Boyle, is a strength and conditioning program focusing on injury reduction and maximizing results. Men's Health Thrive is designed for youth and adult athletes interested in performance-based training. Power, flexibility, speed, high-intensity group, and functional training. Visit our website or like us on Facebook. The Pit, official training facility of your local pro team. Train like an athlete. The United States Hockey League has produced over 240 alumni into the NHL and 51 selections in this year's NHL draft alone. Catch NHL talent at the U.S. as the Thunder set out on their inaugural season. For tickets, call 434-2980. The road of life takes you many places. From buying your first home to sending the kids to college or planning for their wedding, wherever the road of life takes you, Busey's banking and wealth management experts promise to help you every step of the way. Visit Busey.com or stop by one of our many convenient locations for solutions to your banking and wealth management needs. Busey, your dream, our promise. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. There are many reasons to change cars. I want a lower payment. Now, I need better mileage. We're ready. Hey everybody, welcome back to Off the Tracks. We're sitting down here with Assistant Captain Defenseman Vince Pedri here on Off the Tracks, first episode of the season. And Vince, we'll kind of touch on you personally, but also just want to pitch the fact that we got a game coming up tomorrow night, October 31st. It's Halloween night, fright night. So bring the kids down in costumes. If they're 12 and under, they get in free if they're in a costume. So definitely stick out for that. Also, you can get uh, five tickets or four tickets, excuse me, for fifty dollars uh, and a twenty-five dollar gift card kickback from La Gondola while supplies last. So definitely check that out uh, and give us a call. Our phone number three zero nine four three four twenty nine eighty to book those tickets. As we only have a limited amount available, but hey, let's get right back into it. Vince Pedri, assistant captain, and Vince, it's first year in Bloomington here, and uh, I guess same question that we had for from uh, for Coach Williams. Through nine games, what's the feel for you right now? You've been a part of two different programs already uh, in the USHL. What's the what's the feel like here in Bloomington? Uh, it's great. I think guys are just kind of still getting used to the league and figuring things out. Um, but I think we have a good group of veteran guys that are that are guiding the way and and uh, helping them out as much as they can. And uh, I think uh, you know our, our record is is 500. I think you know we probably deserve that, but I know we can play better. Than, uh, and then what we've shown. So we'll, we'll kind of go through your career. You started in Omaha uh, and back when you were drafted, what was kind of the whirlwind of, of being drafted into the league and, and being drafted uh, into a team like Omaha that had a, a pretty decent history in, in this United States Hockey League? Uh, it was thrilling. I mean, uh, I still remember where I was. I actually, uh, I skipped school so I could watch <laughs> the... Uh, the futures draft online and uh luckily enough i was uh selected and uh by omaha and uh, i still remember the first phone call i got from them and and that whole process is very exciting for any player and uh it's kind of neat to go through and uh you know it's something that you don't forget no matter what happens so on the other side of it you can have your words of wisdom now for the guys who did get drafted and they're going through their first year what was the kind of, uh, I guess, range of emotions where you're starting to get used to the game, you're away from home in, in Omaha, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that play into it that don't really relate to X's and O's on the ice, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I learned uh, quite a bit my first year in Omaha, and I, I don't think I would be here right now if I didn't uh, leave my senior year of high school back then and go to Omaha. 
because you you learn so much as a young kid it's time like you realize it's time to grow up and uh you know mom and dad aren't there for you anymore you're you're living with the host family and uh you kind of figure out you got to do things on your own and it's time to become a professional with hockey and it's not where you just go to the rink and play with your buddies like you still play with your friends here but it's a job so then on top of it also second year in omaha you're part of another kind of different take for the ushl you, you get traded but from omaha to indiana mid-season you got to change cities and kind of move to a different place was that a little was that tough to to kind of make that transition yeah it's just different thing to to uh go through i mean it's just one of those things where the phone rings you always remember where you are and and uh, i said okay great um <clears throat> i said i uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh, i enjoyed my time in omaha a lot it was great but uh, i was excited to go to indiana and uh, pick up things there so then the big the big thing and i know it's on your hand right now it's what happened in indiana when you were there last year you get to win the clark cup and kind of another step and we'll backtrack a little before your before the ushl but kind of being on on a championship team does it bring that added sense of okay guys when we come into the locker room this is how, what we need to do to get to there again yeah i mean uh i think like winning a championship obviously a learning experience i mean you, you're gonna have your highs you're gonna have your lows but uh now that you've won one you kind of have that recipe for success so you know what it takes you like you know what you have to do day by day and uh, it's kind of one of those things where now that I've experienced it and I see something that's different than what should be happening, it's my my role to speak up and and uh, you know just kind of help out as much as I can. So now let's go back to before the USHL happened, back to the childhood of Vince Petrie. When when you were getting start getting ready to play, I, I know there's a lot of people who have to be told when they first put on skates and and started to learn how to play hockey. When was kind of the moment where you started to play hockey and was it kind of uh, a decision you wanted to make, somebody else made for you? <laughs> well, uh, you know, my dad coached college for 15 years, but uh, the night my mom went into labor, my dad was in the backyard and he was building the rink for me already because <laughs> of a January birthday. So I remember my, or my, my dad telling me that my mom had to yell at the back door to him and uh tell her we better get going to the hospital so i was <laughs> i was pretty much born into it and then uh, just grew up playing youth hockey in chicago and and then once i got to high school i moved around quite a bit so the the kind of the deciding moment too i mean obviously the, the growing up part of it but where's the deciding moment i think it probably helped with your dad too uh, there's a lot of people that just don't know the right way to go because it's such a strange way you don't go from high school hockey necessarily right into college you ha you go through this junior process in hockey it, does it help to to be able to to kind of have someone help you out and guide guide you through that process as well yeah i mean it was huge like uh i don't think i could be here without my mom and dad right now and my dad's knowledge after coaching college that long he kind of was uh you know he was he was always a coach but he was always a dad too at the same time like as soon as we left the rink it was always you know he's back to being a dad and uh, i was very very fortunate with that and uh you know just kind of after him coaching that long and you know if if i wasn't working hard i'd be sure to hear it so <laughs> so being from minnesota too uh just kind of growing up in in minnesota which is hockey country when you know, the Minnesota Wild all of a sudden start to pop up. Was that the was that the team, or are you a different fan of an, another uh, team growing up? Well, my dad's uh, born born in Detroit, and uh, so I was kind of born a Red Wings fan. And it was pretty <laughs> easy to cheer from back in the '90s because they were always pretty good. So, so on, and does that kind of you know, be, being from Minnesota and being a Detroit fan, is that a little uh, <laughs> off? Yeah, off there, I, I mean. Uh, you know, I always people always kind of raise their eyebrows when I tell them Detroit's my favorite team, and I'm from Minnesota. But uh, you know, it's just uh, what I was born into. So, so now kind of taking into account this year and the future for you, because you know we've talked about the past. Where can we go now, future? Uh, Quinnipiac University. That's where you'll be attending school and and playing hockey there. And I guess when you when you were looking at colleges, how did you finally come to the decision to go to Quinnipiac? um it was it was almost a loyalty thing i remember uh the first college letter and call i've ever gotten was from quinnipiac and uh i remember i still have the letter i was in 10th grade and 
And I thought that was pretty cool at the time. And then as the recruiting process uh, went on, you know, they'd, they'd call at least, you know, and just check in and, and say, hey, what's up? We're still watching. And, <laughs> and then uh, it's funny because, you know, the, I was in 10th grade when I first got the, a letter. And then, you know, four years later, I finally committed <laughs> there. So <laughs> it was a long process, but I'm very blessed and fortunate to uh, be able to uh, go to school there and play hockey for their program. How often have you been able to get out to that campus? That was actually, for, for reference too, that was my number one choice when I was going out. Really? Looking at colleges. And it was, it's a beautiful campus. If you haven't been able to go out to Quinnipiac sometime, definitely go. And I don't know how much you've been able to get out there and what your take was it when you were able to go take a look at that that area. Uh, I took my official visit, I think it was this, like this weekend last year. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was out there at a beautiful time of the year and, you know, it's fall and the trees and the leaves are changing colors and it's, everything's gorgeous. The, the campus in the middle of, uh, you know, a few state parks there and the arena is, is, uh, <laughs> it's gorgeous too. And, you know, I'm very, very blessed to be going there. So, and then on the other side, it's, it's not a bad hockey school. They won the national championship, what, three years ago too. So when you're making the decision, does that kind of play into it as well with, uh, you know, the success of the program? Yeah. I mean, obviously I want to go to a program that has some history and, and Quinnipiac offers that. And uh, I think what Coach uh, Peck Nolan has been able to do with their program over the last couple of years is really something special. And he's he's kind of turned it into, a, you know, a, not a, like a hockey dynasty almost. And, and it's kind of a place where, where every kid wants to go now. So what's it like to – let's go to – right now in in the united states hockey league and what's been able to to go on this year and transpire and you're a guy who's been in the league and this is your fourth year to just be able to kind of look back at, at your career and and see where it's going or, or where it was in, in the united states hockey league what can you appreciate kind of about this this league going through your fourth season uh, it's crazy because it, it's still you know i still remember i feel like yesterday was my rookie season and it's been a blur but uh I've learned to take, uh, you know, every day and not take anything for granted. And uh, you kind of realize that it's it's almost coming to an end now. I'm, <laughs> I'm aging out and I can't stay and play any longer. And uh, I wish I could, honestly, because because I do love it. And uh, there's not there's not many things better than junior hockey. It's that college hockey, or it's that college mentality where you're leaving college, or that high school mentality, or leaving college. You've hit that that now mark, and, and it's. I think that's something that, that a lot of people also don't recognize is that it's also a, another step for you guys that you're able to go through and you kind of have your whole family around it. Getting to know kind of three different families now, where, do you still really keep in touch with all the guys from, from past teams? How close have you been with, with each program and, uh, and each guys you've been in, in the locker room with? I mean, uh, I try and do a good job of, of staying in touch with those guys like. I texted three guys from my rookie season. One had already graduated college. <laughs> One is at uh, Denver University. And uh, it's just kind of neat to stay in touch with those guys. And and the sad thing is, is you win a championship with uh, 22 other guys last season. But, you know, I don't think we'll all ever be in the same room again. And uh, that's kind of hard to uh, to swallow just because, you know, you uh, – one day you're you're a champion and you're hanging out with all your brothers and the next day everybody's on flights home and and uh you know you probably won't see those guys again so it's a little tough there but let's kind of talk about this family what you've been able to grow here in bloomington only you know we're, we're through nine games now starting to get to know the guys and see where this team's starting to to build and you've had a couple of years to kind of frame it up what do you think of this team here going through the season as you've already been through a few games uh, this is an incredibly close team. Um, the camaraderie in the locker room is, is uh, it, it makes it a lot of fun to be at the rink. And, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not where anything is like anybody's picking on each other, but everybody gives each other, you know, a little hard time and it's a family. And, and I think everybody truly cares for each other here. And, and that's, that's really something special when you, when you come down to uh, try to win a championship team, it's, you're not playing with your teammates, but you're playing with your brothers. So finishing up here with uh, Vince Pedri here on Off the Tracks, first episode here uh, for the Bloomington Thunder this season. You can catch us on the re-air tomorrow on BloomingtonThunder.tv, or you can also catch it on Cities 92.9 at 7.30 in the morning on, uh, on that channel. 
Vince, this, this town, you've, you've made your way through a couple different cities and, and seen, seen kind of it all. What's the take on, on Bloomington Normal and being able to live here? Uh, Bloomington's <laughs> great. Bloomington Normal is unreal. I mean, uh, it's pretty special. Like I'm living in the middle of a college campus. I mean, I live on school street <laughs> and I don't attend college. So that's, <laughs> that's something that's really cool where I can just, I'm coming home Friday night after a game and the streets are flooded with students and I see people out and it's just something cool to experience versus, uh, playing in different places and, and not having that kind of atmosphere where it's, where it's like, you're almost playing college hockey, but you're not going to college. So. It's a little, it's a little bit of a different vibe than downtown Indianapolis. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, downtown Indianapolis is great. It's a lot of fun, right. but it's not like, you know, you can go out and have, you know, a bunch of fun or anything, you know, but, uh, it's, uh, it's a blast here. Like, I love it here. It's, uh, I wish I could play all four years here in my career. Well, we wish you could have played here all four <laughs> years as well, but best of luck here in the future. And Vince, and I definitely appreciate the time here. We'll have to do it again sometime. Thanks, Brian. All right. That's Vince Pedro. We'll be right back here in a couple minutes. Stick around. Jake Slaker's on the dial coming up here on off the tracks right here on Bloomington Thunder TV. Cool. room. Frankly, I just hate my old car. What's right for one person might not be right for you. CephQ helps you get the car you want and a loan payment that fits your budget with low rates and no hidden fees. Call phone alone and get a pre-approved loan in minutes. CephQ, not a bank, better. Recovering from cancer often means long treatments and side effects from surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. The Star Cancer Rehabilitation Program at OSF helps cancer survivors and those going through treatment get stronger and feel better. OSF can help you optimal recovery. For more information on the Star Cancer Rehabilitation Program, please call 309-661-6080. The Bloomington Thunder have burst onto the USHL scene at the U.S. Cellular Coliseum. Ticket plans for the Thunder season can be purchased through the Thunder office, so call 309-434-2980 to get your tickets today. Bloomington Thunder Hockey will sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. All right, we're here with Jake Slaker here on Off the Tracks, third and final part coming at you here from the U.S. Cellular Coliseum. Slakers, I uh, appreciate the time here, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of go through through the process here of, of your career, and 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 you're a rookie here in the United States Hockey League. You played a couple games last year, so you got the taste, but now it's the the real thing, and you're you're here. What's it kind of like to to get that shot right now? Yeah, it's uh. Definitely a great uh, opportunity for myself to uh, further my hockey career, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's a big jump from coming from AAA and everything, but it's been a good experience. And right now, I'm just uh, working on getting my confidence and everything and playing my game. But uh, it's been a good opportunity so far. So, kind of the the, the whole roller coaster, uh, I guess, because you you are one of those newer guys. Just being able to, it's kind of a process in junior hockey where you go away from home, and and you're quite a far little ways from home, mm -hmm. uh, being from California, which we'll touch on in a yeah. second too. But um, just kind of being able to live in a different place and seeing parts of the country, um, what's that been like as you've been growing up and getting to see different parts of the country and play hockey? Yeah, it's uh, definitely part of the game. And uh, it's it's never fun leaving home with mom and dad a little earlier than you're supposed to. Uh, but I think it's definitely a good opportunity for us to mature and everything you're gonna have to mature a little earlier being a hockey player because you're gonna move away from home and kind of have to do things on your own i mean bill of families are great here and so far last year was a great bill of family also but uh you're definitely gonna have to 
be responsible and everything and kind of be able to take care of your own things because one your bill of family is going to take care of things but you're still going to have to be able to do things for yourself so i think it's definitely a good billet family here though and granted you have your billets and, and everything but you still got to focus on getting yourself to the rink and, yeah, exactly. and doing all those things is it a little i mean for you too just to be able, you've done it for a couple of years so it's not anything new but a lot of people don't necessarily think about that because mom and dad aren't here throughout your high school years and you're, you're not here right after high school and um how tough is it just to kind of get away from that Granted, at the same time, you're, most of what you guys are doing is being at the rink and being with the teammates, but is it tough to just kind of set your schedule down and all of your focus is now hockey? Yeah, it's uh, definitely pretty hard, especially because, uh, I mean, growing up with mom and dad, or you got a routine going down. So you kind of go out of routine and you kind of have to start a new one and set all your own alarms, wake yourself up. <laughs> It's definitely a little harder, but uh, I'm sure those seven o'clock alarms don't go off. Any yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know I said a few of those, so I make sure I get up. But um, just kind of, we'll talk. We'll go into the the California kid kind of mentality, making the making the move, and you're not too far far off. You got two other California guys here, but um, what's it like making the move from the West Coast and and making that transition to to come play in Central Illinois? Um, it's definitely a little different uh, weather, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the hockey's much better out here. I remember uh, I was out in California, and I was around 12 or 13, and my dad was good friends with Al McGinnis, and uh, he said, uh, Al, my son wants to be a hockey player. What, what do you think I should do? And living in California, hockey's very good out there, but I lived in San Diego where um, the best hockey in California was in Los Angeles, and we had to drive two hours to practice, and that's without traffic, and Los Angeles traffic oh, is yeah. brutal. <laughs> so uh, my dad says he wants to be uh, – my son wants to be a hockey player now, said the best place is come Midwest. So uh, a little bit before I uh, was here in Bloomington, I started off in Chicago. My dad made the move. Uh, my mom stayed back with my sister because she was a senior in high school, and uh, we did not want to move here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, – Definitely had to come out here and uh, try to further my hockey career. But it was a it was a good jump. I think uh, I like the Midwest lifestyle and everything. I like everything that's happened. So, so how do you decide too when you're making that transition? Which league you're gonna? Do? There's a plethora of leagues to choose from, and kind of seeing where you're gonna get get the vibes from from coaches and, and moving around, and uh, it's just a whole different animal than any other sport. So how do you kind of make that decision, narrow down places? And I'm sure Al was probably a little bit of help too, uh, kind of helping you guys move that way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I uh, remember uh, looking at like um, my hockey rankings and seeing the uh, top five teams in the nation. And I said, I want to play for one of those teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I was actually going to St. Louis because I was like, all right, Al told me to come to the Midwest. So I was like, yep. he was coaching the <laughs> St. Louis Blues at the time. And I remember I went to the tryouts and uh, I was fighting for a spot between uh, – me and another kid and uh the other kid actually did make it but i know i was just gonna pick my head up and keep going and try to play for uh, another team out there and uh end up going to chicago and playing for the chicago mission made the team and uh, it was a great year so and then after that you go and play for Beltire, i believe right after that and then from there on out it's it's all history and you're now here in the united states hockey league and what's the transition been like to get into the league and, and you got a taste of it with fargo last year and then the trade here uh, this season, what's it been like to transition into the USHL game? What's the biggest kind of difference between different leagues and things like that and making that step? Uh, I think it's definitely overall the speed and the uh, decision-making. Uh, right when you get the puck, there's someone on you, or you've got to get your head up quick because uh, everybody's moving at such a fast pace and everything. But uh, I think, uh, I don't know, I think definitely the speed is the hardest part because uh, everyone's just a top player in this league and uh, – you got to make the right decisions at the right times. Does it cross your mind also whenever you're on the ice to, to think, okay, this guy's coming down on me, maybe, you know, six foot three and, uh, you know, a, a, a Chicago Blackhawks, a St. Louis Blues draft pick. Does it ever cross your mind or does it ever, or does it just all kind of flow and everybody out there is kind of an X and O that you just got to stop? Yeah, exactly. I really don't try to think about who's going where, who's drafted to where, because mm -hmm. uh, we're all hockey players. We're out there playing in the same league, the same game and everything. So treat everybody the same and play everybody the same. So so now, you know, just being able to, to make that move and start to get into to the league, you're starting to see where exactly everything's going. All the people in the locker room have been helping out. What's kind of the biggest thing from from some of the vets that have been brought over into this program? Because there's quite a few yeah. of them downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, they uh, our vets are a great bunch of guys. They uh good support system for myself and all the rookies. Like uh, I mean, everybody's gonna have a bad game, and they're always gonna be there to pick you up and tell you what you did wrong and help you out. And uh, I definitely think the uh, vets are helping all the rookies out very well. So, and the focus for you on the ice is kind of where where does your game kind of fall in, and where's your focus and trying to better yourself as a hockey player? Uh just uh, overall, just a hard worker. Um, all over the ice, try to play a two-way game, and uh, honestly, just try to make plays happen when I'm out there, and try not to get scored on. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to Jake Slaker here on Off the Tracks, and Slakes, the the, the whole uh, transition to uh, of just being here in, in Central Illinois, and and the um, the idea of living in Bloomington and kind of being adjusted to to life here. What is what kind of what do you like about Bloomington now that you've been here for for quite a quite a couple months right now? Yeah, uh, I think it's a great city for uh, a junior team and everything. I like that uh, everything's about like 15 minutes away. No matter <laughs> where you're going, everything's about 15 minutes away. It's definitely a easy city to get around, everything. But uh, so far, this people seem really nice and get a pretty good fan base here and everything. So I think uh, it's a good city, and I really like. Uh, just over all the people and the location and everything. So And the billet process, too. I mean, it's got to be interesting just to get to know a new family everywhere you, you go and starting to get to know, okay, I, well, who am I living with? Mm-hmm. It's got to be a little nerve-wracking, too. When you when you first start to get to knowing them, but what's your billet uh, situation been like, and, and how do you feel right now in, in the town? Oh, uh, I have an awesome billet. Her uh, name's Chris Williams, and uh, I have an awesome setup and everything. She, uh, I have my own kitchen in the basement and living room and everything. So that could get dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was pretty, uh, pretty excited when I got there. And she's awesome. She uh, actually works here and uh, she really cares about how I do and everything. And it's nice to have a bill of family that when you're at the rink, you want to focus on hockey. But when you want to go home, you want to kind of just like get away. And because mm-hmm. I mean, we're here for six, seven hours a day. Right. We want to get away and kind of get away from the old game. So. She definitely helps me out with that and everything, and she's always there to support me, so she's been awesome. And just everybody kind of grows up, and you, you almost think of a sport as a, as a secondary entity, but now you've kind of dove into this life of hockey is that yeah. first entity, and this is what you do. This is You come to the rink, you're here uh, you know, with, with the guys for X amount of time. Is it just a, a strange little whirlwind? Could you ever have seen yourself doing this when you were growing up? <laughs> uh, it was always a dream. I just uh, never thought it would happen. Now that I'm here, it's definitely uh, – awesome experience and everything but the work doesn't stop now because this is just a minor road or like minor stop for my official goal to play division one college hockey and hopefully pro hockey so and obviously there's a lot kind of <laughs> you you aren't committed yet to it to a team and we don't want to re- reveal anything but obviously <laughs> you, you're still think you're still looking right now and, and looking for that school what are some of the things you're looking for in a school to kind of stick out in your mind as as something that you would like to play for that school or and really attend and live there for four years. Uh, I think uh, coaching is a big thing, and also uh, wherever is just going to give me the best opportunity to uh, make an impact in the lineup as soon as possible and uh, hopefully uh, give me the best opportunity to play uh, pro hockey also. So kind of getting into that, the the pro hockey side of it, this league has has produced you know numerous amounts of players, I think it's over 240, 41 now, something like that, uh, into the United States hockey, or, or into the NHL. Mm-hmm. Does it kind of give you a sense as a guy who's, who's in your first year? Does it give you a sense of, okay, wow, this, this league could really help me out and and maybe help me pursue that career of becoming an NHL hockey player? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's definitely a good league to promote people on to uh, playing pro hockey. And uh, now that a, uh, it was a dream to always play in the National Hockey League and play pro hockey, Division One college, and uh, now it's becoming a reality and everything. So it's definitely kind of nice. <laughs> That's got to be an, another – Thing. there's everybody has that dream but now it's kind of becoming a reality for some of the guys is it does it ever cross your mind or is it just the the thought process of okay I just got to come to the rink and, and do my job today yeah exactly yeah you try not to think about that too much you just come here and do what you've been doing since you're young and taking care of business so for the team now obviously coming off a, off a tough a tough weekend but now the week of practice getting set to, and starting to really dive into what you guys can do better because there's still a lot of hockey we played this year uh, for the Bloomington Thunder, and and this team is in a good position, being 500 after those first uh, first nine games. What's the 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 environment like in the locker room right now? What's kind of the the idea for everybody moving forward? Uh we're all trying to stay positive and everything. We understand it's early in the season and that uh, we have a long season to go, but uh, 
right now we just kind of focusing on the little things in practice and uh, trying to execute the game plan because that's honestly what's going to work. And uh, as long as we stay with the game plan and don't uh, play our game and stuff like that, we should be okay. But uh, in the locker room, guys are trying to stay positive. When it's time to work, we work, but there's also a time to have some fun in the locker room and everything. And that's got to be nice too, that just to be able to, to kind of bond <laughs> with a group of guys and, and be able to treat them as your family, as, as Vince said. Is it kind of comforting to know that when you come to the locker room, it, it, it is business, but at the same time, you got that, that comfort uh, of being with your own uh, other group of family? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got a good group of guys here and everything. And uh, it's uh, we got a good in between of being serious and having some fun too. So it's definitely a good. We're finishing up here with Jake Slaker here on uh, Off the Tracks here with the Bloomington Thunder on BloomingtonThunder.tv. You can catch the re-airing tomorrow, uh, tomorrow on BloomingtonThunder.tv or also on Cities 92.9 at 7.30 on Saturday morning. Slakes, let's kind of get into this Friday's game. You saw Green Bay already, but that, that's a completely different team. That's a whole whole couple weeks ago. What's the, the idea now for the team moving forward after last weekend? Can you really focus on Green Bay, or is it more focusing on your team and just making sure you're getting back to the basics? Uh, I think it's mostly focusing on our team because uh, I think uh, the reason we lost the last two games were our mistakes, not necessarily what the other team did. It's just how we played and everything. So pretty much we've just been focusing on uh, what we can change and what we can do better. But we know Green Bay is going to come out and play us hard, especially after uh, we beat them last time they are here. And uh, they had a few trades too, so we expect a hard team, hard game. For you, just going into that game is the mentality um, of a team that that obviously you don't want to think too hard, too in hard into the game. Mm -hmm. But Green Bay, you know, knowing that you've been able to beat them, does it give you guys a little bit of weight off your shoulders? Whereas when you were going into Youngstown, you were going in with you know an overtime or a shootout loss and a loss. Does it kind of change the environment in the locker room a little bit? Uh not really. No, I mean going into every game. You can't take any team like lightly because mm -hmm. anybody will be anybody any given night. Everybody has great players and play good systems and everything. So, I mean, everybody tries to go into the uh, game thinking they can beat us and we can win. So, I mean, that's just how the attitude it is. And one thing I do want to touch on before we sign off here, you had the first USHL goal this season. So first of all, congratulations. Thank but you. Second off, what's, what was that goal like? I know it was a little unorthodox <laughs> when you scored it. What was the, the idea and kind of walk me through what happened there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember uh, Logan Lambden was uh, coming into the zone on the right side, uh, kind of along the boards and he cut to the middle as a two on two and I was kind of trailing him and he dropped in. I went uh, right to the top of the circle and just shot it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Hit the goalie right in the top of the shoulder and uh, went right in the air and I didn't see it and uh, all I saw was a drop in and I just tried to celebrate as hard as I could before the ref said no goal or anything. <laughs> so yeah, it was definitely a good feeling and uh, it's kind of a monkey off my back. So. Well, take any take them any way they can come. We'll yeah, definitely exactly. look for more of those coming up here, Jake. Yeah. I appreciate the time here and uh, we'll do it again. Yeah. All right, that's Jake Slaker here on Off the Tracks. That's all the time we have. Catch us right back here, re-airing, coming on BloomingtonThunder.tv tomorrow. Also re-airing half an hour show at 7.30 on Cities 92.9 on Saturday morning. So definitely catch that. Uh, catch all of that. For Dennis Williams, Vince Pedry, and Jake Slaker, I'm Brian Tosti saying so long. We'll see you next week right here. Or if you get the chance, come on out Friday night tomorrow on Halloween at 7 o'clock when the Bloomington Thunder take on the Green Bay Gamblers. Kids 12 and under in costume, get in free into the game, or you can pick up a Logandola family value pack, four tickets for $50, and you get a $25 gift card back to the Logandola. That's a pretty good deal, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a good one. We'll keep the thunder rolling.